Welcome to Silver Bar Stacker, folks. I hope everybody's doing well and enjoying their Sunday. That's right, folks. Today is Sunday, and we've got a very, very exclusive and exciting episode for you today, folks. Today, we're actually going to have a very specific focus, and we're going to be focusing in on Tier 1 Engelhard 1-ounce bars. And so there's a lot to digest there, and so before we get deep into it, Let's figure out what the heck is a tier one Engelhard one ounce bar. So now, All Engelhard, if you ever go onto AllEngelhard.com website, they kind of go over what are the different tier systems, and they're actually the ones that came up with that tier system themselves. And the reason they did that is kind of to help sort of organize and catalog all of the huge number of different various art bars and just commercial style bars that there are that exist right there's many of the one ounce variety there's many of the five ounce the 10 ounce the 100 ounce variety there's odd size bars there's fractional bars there's silver bars there's gold bars there's platinum bars there's palladium bars Inglehard produced a wide variety of different bars and so there's a very very deep rabbit hole that you can go down not just for vintage but just for Inglehard in general there's so many pieces out there and now when you focused on one ounce art bars for for example that's just one of many different Inglehard products that you can focus on right there are certain collectors out there who just collect all of the Inglehard dental products that aren't even bullion out there. So there's different types of collectors who collect different types of things. I know somebody who exclusively collects kind of 100 ounce vintage bars because he finds that they're kind of a better value, right? I'm more into the kind of take the opposite route and I like to go more for the smaller denominational bars because I like to have an example of many, many different things. Now, when you look at one ounce art bars, not by Inglehard, but by Johnson Matthew, oh boy. That's an even deeper rabbit hole that you can go down. And so when we take a look at anything on this channel, I like to sort of focus in on very, very specific things. And so rather than focusing on all one ounce bars and just kind of being all over the place, or rather than focusing on all just Engelhard one ounce bars, I'm trying to take a little bit of a deeper focus and maybe let's just focus on the tier one bars that are Engelhard one ounce bars. Now, everything in front of us is not a tier one bar, right? These are kind of some of the more harder to find uh, bars, I would say, and I kind of thought I would take out many, many different types of examples so you can see a bunch of different types of Engelhard bars that have been produced in the past decades, but this is not a representation of all the one ounce bars that exist there's many many more than just this and this is also not a representation of all the tier one bars there's many fewer actually tier one bars than what you're seeing in front of us tier one bars are very very hard to find and let's just focus on tier one let's not go through every single tier on the tier system let's just focus on tier one for now because that's what we're talking about today now we're talking about a tier one bar what does that basically mean ultimately in a nutshell a tier one bar is going to be something that is no more than 500 minted now 500 minted is extremely extremely low mintage right there's very few bars that actually fall into this sort of a category right now when you look over here for example you've got a lot of interesting landscape style bars they all look very very similar they all kind of have the Inglehard logo there on the front but you probably notice maybe some slight differences some of them you're like SBS these all these bars all look the exact same. Yeah, actually most of them look the same. Probably on face value, you look at these and you're like, well, you know, the only difference I see is that this one's got a serial number here and whoop to do you know? Well, collectors care about that serial number, for example, because this serial number is very unique. As an example, like if you buy, if you find an Inglehard bar that has a serial number, but then, and a frosted back, that doesn't necessarily make it unique, right? Any, on any other normal day, this bar right here is an 800,000 minted bar. It's a serialized landscape style bar with a serial number and it's got a, it's kind of got like a frosted back there, like a fine frosted back there. That's an 800,000 minted bar, but a keen eye will notice that this actually is a PB prefix. And not only is it a PB prefix, but this has actually a larger 
number than any of the standard frosted back bars that you'll see. So if you look at any other uh, frosted back bar, for example, you'll notice that the serial numbers digits are actually smaller. So this is something that collectors actually seek out because this is a highly sought after bar, yet actually, rather than this being 800,000 minted bar, this is actually just a 25,000 minted bar. And so 25,000 minted bar is not a tier one bar. That's not even a tier two bar. That falls right into a tier three bar category, right? And you got bars here that are similar. Now you got this bar right over here. It's got a very similar reverse here. Same sort of frosted reverse. But instead of having a serial number, this one right here is unserialized. Now this bar right here is 50,000 minted. It's actually harder to find the ones with the large serials than it is to find the unserialized ones with this fine frosted back. There's a 50,000 bar. This isn't even a tier three bar. This ends up falling into tier four category. <clears throat> now, take a look at this bar right here. These are both unserialized. <clears throat> And you've got a very, very faint difference on the back there. You probably couldn't even notice it until you see them very up close. But you see kind of how this one almost has like lines going down. This is what's called a fine frosted finish. And this one right here is a little bit more refined and cleaner and you don't see the lines and it's just more like very, very fine pebbles. So this is kind of like a fine pebble-like. Fine pebble-like, fine frosted. So fine frosted is 50,000 minted if it's got no cereal. Fine pebbles, oh boy. Now we're falling into 10,000 minted category. Still not a tier one bar, still not a tier two bar. They all fall into tier three and tier four category here. And and, and, and over here, you got a blank back. This is a 25,000 minted bar too. This is just as rare as this large cereal one. So this is no cereal with a blank back. Over here, this is the rarest of all these types of standard landscape style commercial bars. This one right here is a 5,000 minted bar. So even still, we're not into tier one category. None of these bars fall into tier one category. And what makes this bar so unique? This is one bar that I really love to collect very much so. It's because this is a bar that is very unique and no bar, no, there's no other angle bar, hard bar that has this sort of a coarse frosted reverse. So this is one bar that I really, really like to go after the coarse frosted reverse it's got a very very thick frosted reverse but i've just shown you an example we were supposed to focus on tier one bars there's no tier one bars on this row okay so i showed you some varying mintages but no tier one bars over here you've got a gold standard bar you've got another gold standard bar these look almost the same on face value it's just that oh yeah that one's in the original factory seal very cool that it is like this this bar right here looks like it's in the original factory seal uh, it is completely sealed in this little plastic and I'm questioning, hmm, is this in the original factory seal? But I'm skeptical to even claim that it is because I think this is maybe something that somebody perhaps just shrink wrapped in there because <clears throat> from my understanding, a lot of the original wrapping on one ounce bars, unless they were fancy schmancy ones, would be put in inside the this type of uh, wrapping. So I would expect a bar like this to be in wrapping like that. So I wouldn't go ahead and call that original wrapping, but this is definitely original wrapping. What makes these gold standard bars different is that you've got a frosted reverse there, and you've got a mirror back over here. So there's two different types. This one is actually a 2000 minted bar according to All In Card, while this one is a 5000 minted bar. Apparently there's more of these out there, the frosted reverse. Now, from my you know, research and based on my experience, the frosted reverse ones are harder to find. I mean, I find very much fewer than these. And the fact that I found these in the original seal, I've never actually seen a gold standard bar available in the original factory seal. I actually was even able to pick up a pair of gold standard bars, two of them wrapped together, stuck together. So I thought that was very cool of the frosted variety. Now the mirror back, is right over here, and that's just got a nice shiny reverse. So 2,000 two minted, 5,000 minted, no, we're still not in tier one category. Colonial bars, extremely rare. You see a lot of these on the secondary market. I know one of our YouTubers here, Stack Attack Wager, he found a huge bunch of these actually at his LCS, so he got lucky with a huge score. These are normally no less than $100, $200 bars right here. So this right here is a 1,000 minted bar. I'm not 100% sure on the mintage for this because 
you know, for example, the Royal, the Royal um, typewriting company bars, for example, these are 1500 hundred minted bar, apparently, whereas this is a thousand minted bar, but I see fewer Royal bars hit the service, hit the market. So that could just be because the people who collect the Royal bars are more tight. Right? They don't want to give them up at all at any cost, perhaps. Um, and I can understand why that might be the case. I mean, to me, if you had to ask me between these three bars, the Gold Standard, the Colonial, and the Royal, I, I actually prefer the Royal the most out of them, even though they're, they fall kind of in the middle mintage. 1500 minted, 1000 minted, 2000 minted, 5000 minted. Now, what I like so much about the Royal bars, the Royal Typewriting Company, these are made for Royal Typewriting Company, not Royal Bank. Right, Johnson Matthey has made a, a bars for Royal Bank of Canada. This is a Royal Typewriting Company bar. Okay, so this was produced for a typewriting company. So what I like about the Royal Typewriting Company bars is if you're a collector, there's actually two different reverses. So you flip this one over, and you've got a, just a normal, normal Royal stamp there, diagonally stamped across the, the you know, from left to right. Now, if you flip this one over it's upside down <laughs> so there's actually within the 1500 mintage of the royal bars there's two types and from my experience the one that's inverted is a bit harder to find i would say so that's pretty cool interesting to note if you're you know if you really like to collect different variations there's two different variations of corner bar i i've confirmed pretty definitively that on the colonial bar for example even though it's got kind of a similar reverse going they all kind of flip if you flip them sideways they all kind of flip upside down or if you flip them this way they would flip right side up so every colonial bar i've ever seen flips this way okay and i've confirmed that with multiple collectors royal bars not the case there's an inverted reverse there still we've not hit any tier one bars okay now over here you've got a set of three bars that look very very similar Inglehard, and if you look on the bottom, it says Inglehard Australia. Now, Inglehard Australia bars, when we're talking about the vintage Inglehard Australia bars, these are extremely difficult to find. Very, very highly sought after. Always have to pay a huge premium for them. And the reason why that's the case, especially here on these one ounce varieties, is because when it comes down to the one ounce Inglehard Australia bars, there's not very many. There's like less than 2,000 examples across all the different types. And right here, we're looking at like three different types. And then I think there might be like a couple extremely different rare bars that those ones, if they ever hit the market, they would easily sell for over a grand each for a one ounce bar. And because um, I've seen I've seen bars like that sell before recently on, on auction sites. Uh, not eBay like on, on Mineral Exchange for example uh, but when it comes down to the pressed one ounce single hard Australia bars there's only these three different types that exist and they're each 500 minted each and then there's also another poured one ounce bar which is pretty dang cool which is extremely rare and I think that's like 100 I think it's 200 minted if I'm not mistaken I've never seen that one available for sale but I have been fortunate enough to actually be able to pick up some of the one ounce pressed variations and so this is them in the flesh and these my friends are actually tier one bars each and every one of these is a tier one bar because they just fall into that tier one category at 500 minted so this one right here is the series one Inglehart australia bar it's got kind of like a thicker um, outline and stuff like that the text is a little bit bolder and stuff like that series two bar series three bar and as they kind of go move forward they get a little bit more refined and the reverses differ as well slightly as well so now if you look closely if you go on allinglehard.com they'll kind of describe the reverses to you a little bit but it won't be very clear to you perhaps so now this is what they look like series three series two series one okay this is kind of like a smoothish a little bit more pebbly bold text again and then there so this is kind of what the difference is between them that's what they look like there's one thing about reading a description there's another thing where you're actually seeing them in the flesh and this is them in the flesh my friends so that's an example of some tier one bars and what's even more collectible about this is that we've got the whole set of three so I really, really like this. It's one of my prized possessions. It's one of the bars that I really love to collect. Anytime I see them, I like to grab them. Okay. Look over here. How many? These are all. 
outside of this bar these are all Canadian bars all Inglehart Canadian bars okay and now got a huge variety of Canadian bars here let's start from the top you know they we start from the top and then, then kind of work our way down and get a little bit more rare as we kind of go down but take a look at this this is a set right here of three this is the most common maple bar that you'll see sometimes they actually come in these red seals as well now the red seal ones and these ones that I'm going to show you they the red seal ones always come in the 25,000 variety from my understanding. I've never seen a red seal maple bar that hasn't been of the 25,000 variety. And the reason I can easily spot a 25,000 maple is when I look at the back of it, it's got a bordered, bordered back. Blank back, but bordered blank back. So this right here is a 25,000 minted. This one, flip it over. Oh, it's got a border, 25,000 minted. 25,000 minted. 25,000 minted. So these are pretty cool because actually all these Syrian numbers are pretty close. You got a 323301, 3223303323305. So that's pretty cool. You got some close serials there. But these are 25,000 minted. This is the most common and easy to find Inglehard Canadian Maple Leaf bar. Now you start stepping yourself up over here. Now, if you happen to come across a bar like this, these are quite hard to find actually. But um, if you come across a bar like this, you'll notice, hey, wait a second. The one troy ounce is actually not centered. It's actually shifted down a little bit. And because of that, that makes this a lot more rare. There's only 15,000 of these. As opposed to 25,000, there's only 15,000 of these ones. If you've got the little one troy ounce stamp kind of lower down there. And in addition to that, you've got a blank back without a border. See, no border around the edge. Now, move into a territory where you find something with a blank back and no border, but you've got the one troy ounce centered. Now we're talking. Now we're talking about a 5,000 minted bar. So these apparently are the rarest according to all hard. Uh, of the kind of the more common maple bars okay now you can also step your maple game up if you want to you know for example this one right here this has got a bordered back these ones also come with a blank back this one in particular has got a bordered back and this one right here you'll notice it's got larger serial numbers okay so the one whether it's got a blank back or with a border or without a border, it doesn't matter. The border doesn't matter in this case if it's got a large serial number. If it's got a large serial number, each type is 750 minted. There's only 750 of these out there. So again, tier one is 500 minted. So this doesn't fall into tier one category. This falls into tier two category. It's extremely rare. I've only seen these a couple times ever pop up, um, honestly. I mean, I've only had the opportunity to buy them at a price that I was comfortable with uh, a couple of times. So. This is very cool. Large cereal maple bar, 750 minted, but a tier two bar though. Over here, you've got some tier two bars as well. And unlike this one, which is 750 minted, these ones right here are a thousand minted each. This one right here is a set of sequential cereal Scotia Bank Inglehard bars. So I love the Scotia Bank Inglehard bars or any Scotia Bank bars. And these ones in particular are on the original factory seal and with sequential serials my friends so you won't be able to see oh yep, yeah you can see it actually so zero zero two three oh eight zero zero two three oh nine so that's pretty cool scotia bank now you know how i like the canadian bank bars and so in addition to scotia bank we've got this inglehard bar in the original factory seal kind of quite quite toned up but these are very difficult to find so i'll take a toner I'll take a beauty any day of the week doesn't matter to me this one is produced for TD Bank and I have quite a disdain for TD Bank for some reason I, I just don't know why uh, so that's why I like to stack a lot of the TD Bank stuff it's kind of like a weird thing that I have now over here we saw a 750 minted bar now these right here is what we call the King the Club of Kings okay so now these bars right here also, sequential cereals, which is insane because these right here are a 600 minted bar. Extremely difficult to find these bars, 600 minted. But again, 
just shy of being a tier 1 bar. 500 minted is a tier 1 bar, but these are 600 minted. Okay, but the fact that they're sequential cereals and 600 minted, that's crazy. Because you serialize too. Now, down here is what we'll get to after we focus on these. This right here, we've got a nice set of sequential cereals. And this is an Engelhart Industries of Canada bar. So these are Canadian bars. But this is the most common variety of the Engelhart Industries of Canada bar. This is a 17,500 minted bar. So it falls out to the tier one, tier two category. It falls into the tier three categories. Now, these are beautiful. These are beautiful bars. It's very, very amazing that they're sequential cereals, but there are much rarer types of these bars. And this is one such example. This is what we call the 100K series bars. And this one right here, you know, it's got a bull logo there, unlike these. It's got a cereal range in the hundred thousands, okay? And there's actually a couple different types in the hundred thousand, but this particular bar type is a 250 minted bar. Only 250 of these out there. I paid a pretty penny on this bar and I bought it as a private sale, not on auction. So a lot of times rare bars, you do have to bid them on auction. Sometimes you lose them on auction. I've lost this bar right here on auction before for over a thousand dollars. I didn't win. Somebody else beat me. <laughs> I was bidding very aggressively. I, I, when I want something, I don't generally mess around. I'm very strategic about the item and I am ensure that I secure it. I wasn't able to secure this bar the first time I tried to secure it because it was on open auction. I wasn't able to secure it because I lost because the person who beat me paid more than a thousand dollars for the one ounce bar. Thankfully, later when I was buying out a collection, I came across this bar as well as the other variation was able to grab myself an example and I was able willing to pay pay up for it but thankfully I didn't have to pay over a thousand dollars for it but that's the thing on the rare circumstances that something's available and on open auction sometimes they sell for more sometimes and I would say a lot of the time you'll get lucky and you'll get them for cheaper so auctions oftentimes are a good time good place to get those but it's hit or miss when things are available and when you'll be able to get them at a good price I've seen the identical items within a span of a week sell at a hundred plus dollar variants right see one item sell for 400 some dollars then very not even the next week Within a few days, I see the same item sell for 500 plus dollars. So huge variance in the collectible market, very, very low liquid items. So when things pop up, it depends on who's there. It depends on who the buyer pool is at that given time. It depends on how they're feeling that day. It's depending on how <laughs> loose they are with their, their feeling with their money that day. Um, it really depends, right? Now this bar you hear, here, you've got all these Canadian maple bars here. And now if you look at this bar, you'll notice that, wow, this looks very similar in design. The only thing different about this is that there's no maple leaf there. But outside of that, everything is like, wow, wow, it's like the same bar. So if you look at this on allinglehard.com, this is the Argenter dealers of Limited Montreal, Canada. This bar is one that... You know, I only won 50% of the time that I go after it. So I've only been able to secure a couple examples of it, but this bar is one too, where people go pretty aggressive on when they're bidding for it, right? You got some bars, for example, like the Colonial Bar, the Gold Standard Bar. Sometimes when you see those up on auction, they don't get bid up very aggressively because, you know, the market has, they're still uh, available. You know, they still pop up frequently. So when they pop up, people don't bid aggressively. When things like this pop up, people bid aggressively because they don't pop up that much. This is a 500 minted bar, and so boom, that falls into tier one category. Argenta Dealers Limited, Montreal, Canada. This is one of your very few Canadian maple varieties that is actually a tier one bar. Even your Scotia Bank and TD Bank don't fall into that. So this one we covered, this is a 250 minted bar, and I'm saving the best for last, of course, it's the Impex bar. This one that I switch, I said sold for over a, a grand. This one right here 
is a 100 minted bar and that's why people went so crazy over it i mean i never seen this bar i i thought that i would never ever see this bar ever pop up i you know same way i think like i'll never see a 1988 summit bank corporation prospector proof i'm not banking on it right I'm not banking on ever seeing that i'm also not banking on ever seeing another 1984 prospector proof with with the e-logo certain things i just don't expect to see that's a 50 minted round the other one is a 100 minted round this is a 100 minted bar so i wouldn't expect to ever see this bar yet patience is a virtue so anyways thank you for being patient with me while i went through all these bars and i hope you have a wonderful day cheers Oh, 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 oh,